Dear viewers, welcome you all to our show, OSA, that is Orthopedic Solution Academy. Hope you all are well during this COVID-19 pandemic situation by wearing masks and keeping distance with each other. Dear viewers, today our topic is Elizar for the correction of deformities caused by metabolic disorders. Very difficult cases. But we all know that our legendary reserve surgeon, Professor Mofakrul Barisar, can make the impossible things possible by the magical Elizaro. So that today our speaker is Honorable Professor, Professor Mofakrul Barisar. I would like to request Professor Mofakrul Barisar to join with us. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Tanvir, for introducing me. Good afternoon, sir. Dear viewers, we have uh, three learned academic experts with us. Uh, one of them is the highly academician, Professor Navikov sir from Kurgan, Russia. I would like to request Professor Navikov sir to join with us. Good afternoon, dear colleagues. Good afternoon, sir. Dear viewers, uh, we have uh, Dr. Omar sir from uh, Kurdistan, Iraq. I would like to request uh, Dr. Omar sir to join with us. Good afternoon, Good sir. Afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for your kind invitation. Good afternoon, sir. And we have another enthusiastic uh, Elizabeth surgeon from Patna, India, that is Dr. Shamsul Huda, sir. Uh, I hope uh, Dr. Shamsul Huda, sir, has joined with us. Sir, welcome. Thank welcome you. to our show. Thank you. Uh, dear viewers, uh, a metabolic disorder, we all know that it's a very difficult thing for all orthopedic surgeons. And the deformity caused by this uh, metabolic disorder can be corrected by Elizabeth. And our honorable speaker, Professor... Now, I would like to request Professor Mopakarul Barisar to uh, share his screen and start his presentation. Sir, would you please share your screen with us? Okay. Thank you, everyone. Dear friends, uh, can you see my screen? Yes, sir. You are yes. completely visible and perfectly uh, and today, audible, sir. Uh, today, I'm going to talk on a very, uh, you know, interesting and difficult case, the metabolic disorders. The surgeon sometimes may confuse regarding the what are the uh, diseases goes under the banner of metabolic disorders. And uh, when patient is suffering from metabolic disorders, uh, he may have some very different and difficult types of deformities, which are very difficult to uh, manage by the orthopedic surgeons. And today, I, I, I want to share my experience with these uh, deformities that was caused by the metabolic disorders. And uh, my places, this is again uh, my present current working place uh, in Dhaka, two most very big hospitals in Southeast Asia, my center and uh, I always love to show the Professor Elizarov who has done a lot of things for the human beings. When you are talking regarding the metabolic bone disease, it includes many hereditary and acquired conditions of diverse etiology that lead to disturb metabolism of the bone tissues. What can metabolic bone disease cause? In clinical terms, metabolic bone diseases may result in bone pain and loss of height due to compression of the vertebra and they predispose patients to fractures. The diseases under the metabolic uh, bone disorders, you can see here, I have sequentially just placed these names, osteoporosis, rickets we are getting often in children and in adults, osteomalacia, hyperparathyroidism, Pagus disease of bone, marble bone disease or Albert Schoenberg disease, that's, that is we call the osteopetrosis, fibrous dysplasia and osteogenesis imperfecta. So uh, commonly we know this is osteoporosis is the most common metabolic bone disease and its name literally means porous bone. Rickets is a condition that affects the bone development in children. It causes bone pain, poor growth and soft tissue, and weak bones that can lead to bone deformities. And in my country, we're getting a lot of cases that patients are suffering from rickets with the deformities. And osteomalacia characterized by the softening of the bones caused by impaired bone metabolism, primarily 
due to inadequate levels of available phosphate, calcium, and vitamin D, or resorption of the calcium. And Pagan's disease, which is known as the osteitis deformance, is a condition involving the cellular remodeling and deformity of one or more bones. PHPT, that is hyperparathyroidism, is a common disorder in which parathyroid hormone is excessively secreted from one or more of the four parathyroid glands. And again, this fibrous dysplasia is an uncommon bone disorder in which scar-like fibrous tissue develops in place of normal bone. And Albert's Schoenberg disease or Malbert bone disease in this case of disease, you can see the bone marrow cavities become filled with compact bone and very difficult to treat this marble bone disease. And osteogenesis in perfecta, also characterized by brittle bones that fracture easily. Now, regarding the deformity correction, if you want to go for a quick correction, you can uh, get this immediate restoration, early return to life, and patient will feel comfort. But at the same time, if you go for acute correction, you may invite neurovascular injury, compartment syndrome, suboptimal correction, and you can get the non-union also. But when you are using the uh, implants, in case of deformity correction, you have a external fixatory reserve. You can go for IM nailing. You can use the plate and screws. And at the same time, by simple covers and placement of the cast, you can correct the deformities. But in case of metabolic deformities, you can see here, what are the problems? Produce growth plate disturbances, defects in bone mineralization are seen mostly in infants and children, multi-apical deformities. If you look at this child, this is Winsome deformity, look at these, and multi-apical deformities. And prior to any surgical intervention, all hyperphosphatic patients require appropriate metabolic management. Surgery should not be performed until the laboratory parathyroid bones return to normal. So, deformity in metabolic disease, as I told you earlier, you can see the multi-apical complex deformity, poor bone quality. You must keep it in mind, the three problems, and you can go for acute correction or high-tech implantology. Nowadays, uh, most of the orthopedic surgeons, those who don't have any idea regarding the Elizar, they're going for fixed and assisted nailing, and you can use for that. And But in my country, due to the, you know, uh, the quality of bone is not good, we're going for gradual correction by Elizar technique. Now, Exfis, accuracy, minimally invasive, and safety. I am nailed, patient compliance, comfort, no external fixatum time. These are the cases that you can correct by external fixatory Lizarov or fixator assisted nailing. Now, look at this, what we have done since 1990 to 2021. 57 patients, 144 limb segments, 14 hypophosphatemia and two renal osteodystrophy. All patients are metabolically normal at the time of operation. Look at this severe deformity with patellar dislocation tracking. And this is wins up. This is a boiling of the femur at the same time, the tibia. Now, I would like to share my experiences with the case presentation. This is a 12 year old girl, bilateral boiling of the femur and bowing of the tibia or O-type deformity. You can see here, quality of bone is not good. Now, if you do the draw, if you draw the lines, hip to the ankle, see mechanical axis deviation. This is totally O-type deformity. So before going to do any surgery, you must have radiographic view from the femur and from the tibia and whole length of the femur whole length of the tibia Two, three. And, as well as the ankle. Now you can see how she is walking. Look at this. Very difficult case, O-type case. This is due to the ricket. See? 
Yan Gaon. Bas. And now you can see here what I have done. Just look at the first. I have done the osteotomy in the femur. I am going to show you the later on. And this is at the same time. Patient is working with this, you know, worker during treatment at the same time after doing the right side. Uh, after seven days, we have done this left side and simultaneously you can do the I have done the four segments femur, upper, left, right and left and tibia also. Now you can see here that you have a view with a fixator, double osteotomy for correcting the deformity in the lower tibia. If you draw a line in AP view and lateral view, you can see the mechanical axis of the tibia is almost corrected. Now, how many rings we have put here? One, two, three, four, and with olives, and you can. At the same time, when we have done the osteotomy, at the level of the osteotomy, you are putting the hinges. This is very important. And follow up after three months. See, you can see here. And this is, you can see, follow up after five months. Now, from this situation, look at the swimmer, mechanical axis deviation, and the TB also. Now, you can see here, radiographic view of this one. Patients with tibial virus malignant preoperative mean MPT was 80 degree and post operative we got 87. That is the normal minimum. This is like this is the mean mean MPTA. Now you can see here before this one and after before and after fine correction by uh, Elizarf technology and the apparatus. Now let us see the again, again another case. Look at this, dear friends. Bilateral genovalgum with patella tracking. Look at this. See what is the patella? This is the marking of the patella from the front view and back view. You can see the X-ray, and this is the radiograph. And then undergoing rehabilitation after fixing the reserve. And then radiographic view, osteotomy in the lower femur. And you can see before and after full correction. Gradually, it took 11 months to correct the whole femur, patella, and look at the ankle, look at the foot, look at the ankle, both sides. And from the back, you can see here. Now, dear friends, you can compare this one backside with this and front view this one with this and this is the full length x-ray before surgery and this is the you can see here almost corrected the right side and the left side and you can see how he is walking and we're jumping moving so look at this these are the very difficult cases uh, you can uh, correct with this magical it is out of technique now i would like to share you again multiple lower limb deformities in rickets we can see here valgus of the right and varus of the uh, left this is front view rear view you can see the deformities in the femur in the knee at the same time in the ankle and deformities here this is called windswept deformity and renal tubular rickets, familial hypophosphatemia. Before treatment, during treatment with the Elizar fixator, you can correct it by placement of the doing osteotomy here and here and placement of the hinges. This, this is the after correction. Uh, these brothers presented with the knee deformities, the younger brother of that child. And now, this windswept deformity, comparison of pre and post operative scrolls, before surgery, the patient will complain, pain, limping, walking quality, 
proximal range of motion and distal range of motion. So paired samples test regarding all these five points. Uh, see, good quality correction. And then you can go for another case. You see, this is a fibrous dysplasia of McCune, that is Albright syndrome, 13 years old child. Look at the back side of the girl, 13 years, very big coffee outlet. I have shown you this one that is the back side. And look at these valgus and how she's walking. Bone quality is not good, poor quality of the bone, valgus knee with five centimeter LLD. And then we started doing correction with Elizaro fixated. I always try to fix when the bone quality is not good with the multiple K wires or only wires. And you must suggest your patient to go for exercises after doing the Elizar of surgery. And patient is doing exercises with Elizar of surgery. After Elizar of surgery, you can see here. See, allow your uh, patient to go for exercises in the uh, fixed center in the upper femur and in the lower tibia. So, now you can see during treatment, after three months follow up your friends, and finally you can see the X of the whole length almost corrected. Look at this, three centimeter LLD and deformity in the knee was also corrected. So this is before, this is after treatment. Now you can see here, just after the removal of the fixator, patient was allowed to walk with a walker. And before that, she was walking like that, you can see, just you can compare. So McCune or Albright syndrome or disease, the bone quality is not good. So all these types of cases, you can fantastically correct by Elizarov technique. So this is the beauty of Elizarov when you are using uh, this kind of, uh, in these kinds of patients. So this is a case, another, sorry for the, uh, uh, the movie will just now uh, opposite to the uh, not normal situation. Look at this. This is genovalgum due to rickets. You can see the whole length of the uh, femur and tibia, mechanical axis deviation, deformity of the whole tibia. You can see, and now at the same time, you can see the posture of the whole patient and the body of the patient, and you can see the uh, valgus deformity of the knee and at the same time, patellar tracking. Now, what we have done, just if you look at this, we have done the osteotomy in two levels. Here, two levels, here, and the lower femur. And we have done the right side first time, and then after a few days, we have done the left-sided and patient is allowed to walk with this fixator. Now you can just compare the uh, tibia and the fibula and after correction of the tibia and the same the upper part, lower part of the femur. So this is before just when you remove the apparatus, you just allow the patient to go for after fix removal after removing, dispounding the apparatus, you just uh, put the plaster and after three to four weeks, then you remove the plaster and allow the patient for bracing with hinges in the knee so the patient can go for exercises, for knee bending exercises and patient can walk with the braces. So this is the case. This is, you see how he was walking before and this is after uh, uh, after the treatment and oh, the patient is working nicely and the deformity is fully corrected with the braces. This is the uh, case that we have done, very difficult case. Uh, on an average, six months to 11 months, even 12 months, it takes time to correct the deformity in four segments. So this is a case, very simple, two years I would like to share Again, this two years old boy, uh, parents insisted
to go for the correction. And then I advised not to go for our liaise. But you can do that when the, you know, the parents are uh, very much interested to go for deformity correction. Very easily you draw the lines from here to here. And then you can correct here. You can correct here easily by doing the osteotomy and putting the Elizar. You see, children always takes Elizar of apparatus very nicely. The, see we have what we have done and put the fixator here is the true effects of the deformity here also the true effects of the deformity so radiographic view you can see here so this is after treatment nicely corrected and uh, you can see here this is before and this is after the treatment before and after the treatment now very difficult and severe cases Patient is living in Dubai. Uh, he came to Dhaka just for treating, consulted in different parts of the different countries. Now look at the bone quality, dear friends. Deformities of both lower limbs. 15 years old boy. Look at the femur here. And look at the lower end of the ankle. And you see the 15 years growth plate is almost going to be close yes still it is visible now if you draw the lines glca glc here now you can see your mechanical axis and mechanical axis deviation whole limb c it is not through the knee joint <clears throat> so now look at the ankle from the front side and look at the ankle from the back side and then see opening wedge what we have done First osteotomy, second osteotomy. You see, step two, osteotomy here, osteotomy, and three, gradually you go for distraction. Coming up, it is opening wedge, opening wedge here. Now, you just see the placement of the hinges, and, and at the same time, placement of the rings, and placement of the first ring, placement of the second ring, and placement of the last ring, that is third ring with hinges now gradually you are correcting you are just lengthening you have done the two level osteotomy proximal and distal see here and see here this is step three and then you can see here step five going on gradually this opening wedge opening wedge if you draw a line look at the ankle this is the anatomical and mechanical axis almost corrected look at this this is a p and lateral view and this is the you see how widening of this opening wedge is going on is going on see the level now draw a line this is almost corrected and uh, this is the uh, <clears throat> final radiographic view before dispounding the apparatus so dear friend you can see here <coughs> before doing uh, final correction, uh, you must draw a, when you are taking your patient to the OT, before that, you must draw the angles. You should have to keep it in your mind, the different angles in the hip, in the knee, as well as in the ankle. Now, you just compare, gradually you are correcting these kind of deformities by putting the hinges with Elizaro apparatus. And at the same time, the bone quality while you are uh doing osteotomy and after giving the distraction you will get a very uh, good result now this is the case again i'm i would like to uh, share my experience with the case this patient with fibrous dysplasia the diagnosis was in different his parent came to my place after going to different places the diagnosis was different. Somebody was thinking about that. This is not a fibrous dysplasia. Then we have done the uh, operation and we have uh, taken the biopsy from two places. And biopsy has given that this is a fibrous dysplasia. What we have done, remove the whole segment. And then uh, three ring construct. Here you can see here, putting the one olive oil from that side. Then gradual bone transportation to upwards. Look at this. 
what happened and this is finally uh, we could achieve the you know the bone transportation and this is the view of this removal of this and now if you look at this the the uh, pathology was here it was removed and then finally this is the lateral view and ap view and this is the case that i'm going to share my last experience with this one with osteopetrosis see very difficult case hard bone this is a compact bone filled with the cavity whole cavity with the bone compact bone this is a young lady 30 years came to my place and then what we have done look at this sometimes we need to go for you know shan spins in the upper part of the femur due to the anatomical constraint look at this this is the pathological area fracture area put the shans and here is the shans and here is the only the wires and then allowed the patient to go for uh, walking and after dismounting the apparatus this is the final view sometimes it's very difficult to go for nailing of the marble bones of osteopetrosis disease so these are the cases that i have shown you under the banner of metabolic disorders again pathological fracture bone quality is not good you can see here the fracture here this is the pathology whole upper and lower again he was treated elsewhere by dhs you can see here what happened then then we have to remove that one and corrected the uh, you know angulation here with multiple k wires putting through the neck of the femur and these are the console wires that are not passing through the uh, second cortex cortex to cortex and then we have corrected the angulation the, we have not given any kind of you know uh, bone grafting we just to allow your patient after putting the lizard of apparatus in proper way Jura. i will suggest your patient to go for weight wearing with the uh, Elizar fixator in the thigh and we always allow the patient to go for ladder you know we have a physiotherapy uh, rehabilitation center we allow our patient to work with this kind of uh, Elizar fixator by multiple k wires or olivers and go for exercises now you can see here dear friends from this situation from pathological fractures dhas and this is the quality you, see, you can see a little bit uh, deformity here so this is acceptable let me you can see here so this is passage disease same pattern see i told you that multiple signs of osteogenic sarcoma in a patient with pagis disease of the right hemipelvis and if patient comes with these types of deformities again the same way if we draw a line here draw a line here this is your true effects of the deformity by doing a single one osteotomy you can correct or you can go for two osteotomies here one is here one is here and gradually you can correct these kind of deformities so these are the cases that we have treated and the complications no loss of correction no infection we have seen during the treatment of these metabolic bone disorders and in my conclusion dear friends i would like to say the result is excellent when you are using elizar fixated needs good expertise for elizar of surgery no risk of emboli you can go for fixated resisted naily you can do that but may you may avoid emboli but in case of elizar there is no risk of that and hospitalization period is little bit longer because you need to control all kinds of you know activities after putting the lizard of uh, uh, in the patient's limb and uh, we can get after the uh, treatment better range of movement better cosmesis minimal invasive surgery no recurrence of uh, deformities 
and uh, that I have shown you. Uh, these are the deformities that we can uh, we can we can we can we have published in different journals. This is osteopetrosis. You can see here again Medcap journal. This is the uh, tibial fibrous dysplasia in children. Again, we have published all this. And I always love to say that illis are fixated and biological principles of these gradual destruction revolutionize the management of limb deformities. Look at this, dear friend. Limb length discrepancy, bony and joint contractures, soft tissue contractures, bone loss, delayed and non use you can control the infection you can go for transverse distraction and ischemic clean disease you can correct simultaneously by this fantastic ilizarov technique and why ilizarov ilizarov if you think compare the left side and right side i myself always think that this i if you see the alphabets of ilizarov it means you must have some intelligent when you are using Elizar, that is I. You can go for lengthening, whatever you want to do. Again, I, you can control the infection. Z, you have a zigzag. You can correct any kind of deformity. You are getting angiogenesis that is adaptable and amazing, reliable. Of course, you have a lot of opportunities by the Elizar apparatus. And finally, you are getting a victory, and this is versatile. And Elizarov feel any defect in life of bone. When you are hopeless in orthopedic treatment, you must think to Elizarov. The difficult cases, you can treat with this fantastic technique. Uh, in the extended life of quality, you see that I have, the, I have shown you the different difficult cases and you can lengthen, you can correct by this fantastic technique. When all lights are off, the light will is out of his own. An unbelievable event you can get by the Zarov technique. You can, whenever you are finding any kind of disability, and disability ends by Elizarov. And we have a bright future in disability by Elizarov technique. So these are my uh, patients and my friends. So you can see here, uh, this is Novikov, Shepsov, no Shepsov here. Shepsov is another case here. And we are doing surgery in Bangalore. This is in Ramaya Medical College Hospital. And my team in here. So carry home message. These are the uh, things that I've shown you. This is always on the basis of evidence. Of course, Elizarov is always science and surgical skill of the surgeon. And whenever you have all these things, you can do something with this fantastic technique. Uh, finally, uh, this is my 94 international articles published, seven books. And I'm going to, I finished already the third one, uh, eighth one, that is the upper limb. Within a short time, it will publish. And thank you very much for your kind attention. And this is the man that uh, I must pay gratitude uh, to this gentleman. And at the same time, his successor, Professor Vladimir Ivanovich Shepsov. And thank you very much uh, for giving me the time to talk on this difficult case, metabolic disorders by Lizarov. Thank you again. Okay. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, that was an uh, excellent presentation. And I think uh, uh, it was an, a historical presentation as because of lots of difficult cases uh, in a single presentation. Uh, now, I would like to request uh, Professor Novikov, sir, to say something regarding the presentation. Dr. Bari, спасибо тебе. At Ruskich Vachey. Thank you very much from uh, our Russian colleagues. And uh, today we can see 
difficult uh, cases with metabolic disorders. And this is not uh, our job. Because, for example, rickets, uh, this is patient uh, need take care from uh, <clears throat> urologist, from uh, in other specialities, and uh, during the treatment by Elizarov, uh, Professor Barry, uh, you support? Did you support uh, this patient with biphosphonate, with uh, in other culture? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah? Yes, you, yes. I this see. is uh, you was alone or collaborate with? No, no, no. Uh, you know, take the yes. That's why I told before doing surgery, you must have all these tests and take the urologist and at the same time even the pediatrician. You must take consultation yeah, from yeah. them. And regarding the deformity, then you can handle that one. And uh, Doctor Barry, can we together just now uh, again? Uh, to see uh, one patient, uh, case number six, can you show? This is very difficult case. And just now, uh, only uh, technical uh, questions. Why you have different position between uh, fibula on the right, uh, right and left? And uh, uh, how you start? Because uh, sometimes difficulties or errors give us a new technique. This is uh, all errors our teacher. And uh, can you show, uh, Dr. Barry, oh, case I number six? Problem. I uh, understand no. that is that is from Dubai. Uh, no, no, I no. Uh, can can you yes, show yes. picture? Picture, picture because picture. one fibula is uh, excellent, another fibula is excellent. diverted. No, it Please. doesn't hamper. It doesn't create any problem. It doesn't. I, I understand your question. Yeah, it yeah, does yeah. not create any problem. No problem. Why, uh, uh, Professor Barry, why we have different position, different view? What you this see? Is, this I'm is. I'm not asking good. about the complications. I am happy no. with this final result. Yes, very good question that you have uh, answered. Uh, you have you have asked me the uh, when I have done the osteotomy, the fibula was rotated. You know, or rotated. It was not like right and left. Not the same. It was rotation. Yeah. Then I have I have not thought about that one. When I have done the osteotomy in the upper level, in the fibula, in the lower level, it was just rotation and two more, you know, uh, deviation from the normal position. And I thought it will keep like that. I have not touched that one. And that was the uh, problem. Uh, no problem with the patient's, you know, mobility and other things. Patient does not complain any kind of problem that's why i did not touch that one i have kept that one in that way no uh, my question is uh, did you fix uh, in proximal part uh, cap of fibula yes no? i have fixed that one yes i have fixed that one you thought Both that i have not fixed that was debated i have fixed that one proximal yeah, part yeah yeah thanks thanks a lot okay uh, thank you very much sir that was a great discussion now i would like to request uh, dr shamsuluddin sir to uh, say something regarding the uh, presentation. Thank you, Vali, sir, for such a wonderful lecture. It was a wonderful uh, learning and uh, legendary cases, sir. I just have one small question. In sir, uh, periodic uh, uh, severe deformity like widgets and cystic diseases, what is the rate of recurrence with the growing age and how many cases do you need to do revisions in an average, sir? You repeat the question again. Sir, uh, like in uh, uh, difficult periodic complications, uh, deformities, mm. cases that you have done, like in Pages disease or like in uh, cystic fibrosis cases, which have uh, severe deformities, when you have done in, at the age of five or six years, till the children grow at around 16, 17 years, what is the rate of uh, revision cases that you have been doing, sir? The recurrence of deformity and uh, revision surgery? No. Metabolic diseases, yeah. Uh, uh... That is deformity in you just repeat that the sound is not coming to my place again. So, uh, yeah, revision, revision as growing age, yes, and... vibration, vibration in your asking questions. Okay, so just uh, answer. yeah, Doctor Tanvir, could you hear my voice? Yeah, 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 uh, I, I can hear your voice clearly. Would you no, please? This uh, is, make... you know, a sporadic interruption. My question for him. Okay, okay, okay. Definitely, definitely. Uh, mm -hmm. Sir, uh, Doctor Shamsul Dasar is asking about the uh, uh, recurrence of this uh, Pages disease uh, 
as because of you are treating the patient in the age of uh, five to six years or then what will yes. happen in the uh, years we, of we 16 or 17? Yes. I, I, yeah, yeah. I got the question. If you correct the alignment all the time at the age of five and six and yeah. you just allow your patient after removing the apparatus to go for, you know, one, two or three years with the braces. If you see there is no deformity, recurrence is going on happening, then you stop the uh, application of the braces. Otherwise, you should have to advise the patients, parents to go for braces for one, two or three years. At the when you started after five or six years. Even then, I have shown you the one case at the age of two. These parents yes. insisted me to go for that. That I have done. Right. Still, passion is coming to my place. I could not show you that long follow-up. Patient is okay, no problem. So you must tell them to go for, you know, uh, with this correction, vitamin D, use of braces, and long-term follow-up. Otherwise, you'll not uh, have any problem. And uh, I have not seen in my case the recurrence rate. Okay. One more question, sir. One more question, sir. Uh, as growing age, like, a, like just we have a crooked hip or something like that, do you need to give an... Uh, Internal fixation like uh, PFN when the child grows in an adolescent age? No. See, uh, those who are using fixator assisted nailing, yeah. they are doing that. But I have not put any kind of nailing inside. All these cases that I've shown you only by Lizard fixator doing the correction, mechanical and anatomical exceeds, nothing else. Just, just to avoid uh, uh, re uh, repeated deformity or refracture, no, no pressing. No, no, no. Okay, no. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Sir, I have one question. Uh, uh, in your last slide, uh, you have shown us that uh, you are using the console wires in case of fibrous dysplasia. Uh, yes. Sir, uh, what is the uh, role of this console wire in case of fibrous dysplasia? Uh, whenever you are drilling anywhere, you are drilling, you are increasing circulation. This is the theory. And console wire, there is one wire coming from one cortex to first cortex to second cortex. It doesn't pass through the second cortex. And uh, with the normal wire, if you use another two or three or four, you bend like these wires or you fix it with multiple wires, it gives stability, not like the full wires, you know, tension wires. So you can you use multiple console wires to increase circulation and for more stability with the normal wares. That is crossing wares. So this is the console wear. When you have don't lot of spaces, you cannot put, you can put the multiple uh, console wares in, in place where there is a fibrous dysplasia to increase circulation. You can use multiple two, three, four or five console wares. S console wares, whenever you're putting like this, you could ban like this, you can ban. Okay, that, that's great. That's good. I think uh, the network is uh, jamming there. Uh, and it was a great discussion as because of uh, uh, lots of difficult cases we have uh, uh, seen in the presentation of uh, Professor Mofakarul Barisat. Dear viewers, uh, we think we have learned a lot from this presentation. And uh, I would like to thank uh, Raj TV uh, for helping us to arrange this type of academic program and definitely Renata Pharmaceuticals Bangladesh Limited for sponsoring our programs. Uh, dear viewers, uh, we hope uh, we'll meet in the coming Friday with another Elizabeth topic. Till then, uh, I would like to say bye bye to all of you. I'm Dr. Motan Rishab saying bye bye to all of you today. Bye. You are watching Raj TV, Jagulone, Bangladesh. Please subscribe.